Blog Talk Radio. Good morning. This is your host, Lorraine Neidhart, and you have reached Venus Unplugged, your virtual heartbreak hotel. And what we do here is we explore uh, and remind ourselves and evoke uh, an understanding of the laws of Venus, not just in terms of beauty, but love as a principle. If we don't understand the pathology of love or the archetypal realm or structure behind our human relationships, we're usually in hot water. So, um, and not a hot water we want. So what we've been working on and exploring the last couple of weeks has been Ash Girl, which is another version of Cinderella. So today we are going to explore tasks. And since it is going to be the winter, uh, the summer solstice, I thought it would be fun to give some tasks. Uh, because this is, what, what are tasks? Why is it that she always has to struggle or clean the pots and, you know, mend, mend the socks and do all those types of things, you know? That's what you women usually do. Because it's it's about weaving and relating. Men get to slay dragons. Women do too, but just in a different way. And so last week we discussed the tree and uh, realizing that this is a, it's the symbolism of the tree growing out of the mother's grave, uh, which is in this case an ash girl. Her father brings her back a twig, a hazel twig. She buries it. At her mother's grave, she weeps, and the tree grows into a magical tree. So what does that mean? All right. So what it is the symbol of, one of the things it's a symbol of, it's, it is of the divine or world spirit. So, the, so this is part of, so she tunes in, she knows. And in this case, you know, send, uh, I mean, Ash Girl, I mean, she, she, she gets on it, man. She is proactive. She, uh, her father's on the way to uh, the fair and asks um, the sisters and her, you know, what do you want from the fair? And the sisters go like, oh, no, I, you know, I want good gold and I want dresses and I want that. And she says, no, 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 she wants the first branch that touches him. So she's going for the magic. She's going for what is what's what's real for her, and what real what is real for her is having this power. Now, does she know it? I'm not so sure, but we never know what we're really up to in life. It's it's not until it's all done and finished, or Saturn finishes with us, that we go, oh wow, that's what that was about. So. We need to look at that, and we need to look at this. Uh, you know, what are the tasks in your life that uh, is being demanded of you? You know, usually it's the one we don't want to do. I like to do the task I, I, I like the least first, because then I can spend lots of time, uh, once I finish that, on the stuff that I love. So uh, that's the way I do with that one. So in this particular image on Cinderella's task, what does that mean? What does a task mean? You know, there, in, in each version, it's, it's, she's given different things. Sometimes she has to clean out the stables. And in this particular ash girl, the mother gives her the, uh, the stepmother gives her the lentils. It's always the lentils. Separating the lentils. Separating. And it's always about separation, separating from one level to another, understanding what belongs where, not mixing everything up. Do you know when someone is having a really hard time or is heartbroken and they tell you the story for the first time? It's all mixed up. And you sit and you wait and you listen and you hold that space for them to tell the tale, to tell their epic tale 
uh, whatever it might be. And that's part of the task. So these tasks always seem impossible, uh, and uh, as they do in, in our own lives. Like, what does this have to happen to me? Well, it has to happen because you're being invited or commanded into growth. And if you don't want to do the task, you're not getting the growth. You'll maybe get some phony aspect of it or you'll think you've done it. Okay. I laugh when a client will say, oh, no, the shadow. I've done the shadow. And I think, I no such a thing. It can be a, we can be aware of it. We can work with it. But believe me, the shadow is with us for eternity. All right. And so in this Ash Girl version, she has to uh, live this rather unhappy life. But the purpose of keeping her uh, in menial and unhappy state, uh, it's to prevent her from going to the ball. You know, if, if we're miserable and we're complaining and why is this happening to me and I don't know, we don't see the signs of how to get out. We don't see the little doorway or the book or the, the, uh, the word, the synchronicity, meaningful coincidences that go like, you know, wow, take a left, don't take a right. So that's why it is, and particularly at this time, at this holy time of mysticism and mayhem and magic midsummer, um, so much great good can be happening and we can do our tasks. So in the world of manifestation, the tasks are difficult and they're encountered by the heroine and, and this is the way of myth. And then after the trials and tribulations are experienced, the world comes to start the journey back to paradise. So when her tasks are completed, uh, she's still, you know, rejected and spurred and jeered by the stepmother and the sisters who use her as a servant to help them get dressed for the ball. So she's left without consolation and betrayed. But supernatural powers come to her aid. The spirit of her mother, sometimes an old woman, sometimes a midwife, any of the helpful animals, the birds, or less frequently the fairy godmother, that's the Disney version, okay, appears and equips her for the ball or the festival. So I thought it'd be kind of cool if I helped you equip yourself to go to the ball. There is a marvelous book by Robert A. Johnson, one of my all-time favorite. I reread all of his books every year, and each time I'm not out because he just the dude is just amazing. So people will know it as, the, you know, he did the he, she, and we books, and this book is integral, Understanding Psychological Projection. So the task I set before you if you wish to accept this, is how do we withdraw our projection to get our gold back? Because we need it. And we particularly need it uh, at this time of the year because this is the time, this is the year where we need to gather. We need to take our gold back. So in this chapter, it's called uh, Take Inwardly What is Inward. So I am reading from Robert A. Johnson's Inner Gold. So all effect is interior. All effect is interior. Any emotional impact we experience is inside us. If someone were to denounce me, spreading all the gossip and uh, evil he might find, I would probably wither. It would weigh me down, but the withering is my interior matter. If you hurt my feelings, it is an interior matter for me. This is a very powerful statement. So when your feelings get hurt, your task 
is to see what, you know, what, what that feeling is about. Why is that hurt? Take it back. They don't really have the power to do that. Okay. You need to understand what's that boo-boo there. Why would you agree with someone who says something so hurtful or is rude or doesn't reciprocate? You see what that's about. And then he states, uh, yeah, if you accuse me of having green hair, that won't bother me. It's not true, I'll say. But if you announce that uh, I was rude yesterday, I'd have to duck. Uh, if it has an impact, it means there is a war inside of me. So if someone says something to you and has an impact, it means there's a war inside. I mean, what comes to mind when mothers go after daughter's hair? <laughs> they got a thing for going after your hair. It's hilarious. It's like, why don't you do something with your hair? Or whatever, okay? It's always a time bomb. But that's your time bomb. Not anybody else's. You have the power. You're going to the ball. And in order to get to the ball, you got to see what is going on, what got set off. Anything that can burn a person should burn. Only the things that are fireproof are worth keeping. And if you can hurt my feelings, they are better off hurt because it's an error in me, is what he is saying, which is very, very interesting. Not saying you're bad. Not saying you can't go to the ball. He's just going correct it. That shit's going to get in your way. And that's what we do. If somebody's consistently mean to you, stay away from them. More cat than dog. Don't go play in their sandbox. Stay away. If you need to tell a white lie to save your soul, so be it. A cat's not going to go looking for you if you've abused it. It's going to smell you coming and disappear. So if someone is hurting your feelings, and this can also happen, you know, internally. The negative mother or envy, and you know, can really be attacking. And, and this is part of sorting the seeds. What is this? Where does this come from? Not telling ourselves the story all over again, just... The facts. What is going on? Why does this crush me? When someone says something that's absolutely not true, but you fear it could be, they're going to get you, man. But what you could do is write down what they say and then go, okay, let me really look at this. Let me look at from down, across, over, above. What is it about this statement that has such an impact? And where, on some unconscious level, do I agree? Because somewhere, that person has your gold. And if someone is trying to hurt your feelings, you have to see what the value function of that feeling is. People don't realize, you know, you could say something to the adult me, and I'd laugh, right? But the inner kid is devastated. She doesn't understand. Why are they being mean? She wants love. So we need to also know that's another thing we need the task of sorting. The adult, the child, the adolescent, you know, when something happens, to ask yourself, how old am I now? Right this second. Did my five-year-old receive this? Okay, or did my 45-year-old receive this? What's going on here? So then he states here, to take inwardly what is inward is a great art. I am getting better at it. I don't uh, get my feelings hurt as much anymore, but there are still things that may make me wince. This means there are things inside me I haven't dealt with yet. One of the most powerful realizations we can have is that all affect, A-F-F-E-C-T, is interior and needs to be understood and worked on uh, in an interior way. So in an interior way is to dialogue or, or dreams. 
If someone has your gold, or even if you just think they have taken your gold, and then they displease you, you might become furious. So gold is the projection. I mean, you can you can project onto somebody like, oh, aren't they mauvy mauv? And then, I don't know, you see him smoking a cigarette. And just, oh, that's disgusting. Okay. Well, that was your projection. It doesn't mean that they're evil. It just means that's what they do. That's some harmful thing they're doing to themselves, which makes them human. Uh, so that we project. And, of course, when we get caught, and particularly when we fall in love, that's always the doozy. Uh, we project all sorts of stuff. We have no idea what our inner, our inner uh, animus looks like until we fall in love, and there it is, looking right back at us. So if someone has your gold, or even if you just think they've taken your gold, uh, and, they, and then they displease you, you might become furious. Knowing what is going on at a deeper level can save you from this kind of suffering. You have no right to be dependent on anyone or jealous of them. You have no right to be lonely. My saying this won't cure you in a day, but it might be of meaning for a cure. Dr. Von Franz, uh, who was Jung's uh, disciple, uh, nearly knocked me over when she said, this is what Robert Johnson is talking about, shyness is just arrogance. And he states, I'm the shyest person on the earth, and she spoiled it for me. So, you know, that was a shadow aspect of him, but he's got his goal back, right? So how do we reclaim projections? Projections happen automatically. It's not something we can do or not do. It's just there. Um, and it can be positive or negative. So, but it's, it's always happening. But once we, that's part of the task, is discerning, wow, this is a projection. I'm giving this person my gold. I'm the one who... Uh, wrote something or I'm the one who inspired that and now they're taking all the credit for it. Wow. Okay. So, or or very often there can be kind of a counter projection. Somebody accuses you of doing something that you're absolutely not capable of doing because uh, it's just not in your, in your being. And it makes you paranoid. Oh my God. Oh, what if other people hear that? So what? Other people want to believe it? They'll believe it. They don't, they won't. What other people think of you is none of your business. It truly isn't. Because it's what they're thinking. So, reclaiming our projections. So he states here, when we find ourselves clinging to someone, caught in an unconscious grip, uh, grip or illegitimate demand on him or her. It is difficult but possible to let go. Dr. Veron Franz helped me this when she said, don't behave as though your projection is a dog. You can whistle home anytime you want. The next time you ask someone to carry your gold, make the effort to know what is going on. Stay in contact with your gold as you put it on someone else. If you ask her or him to carry that numinous, glow-in-the-dark quality for you, that spiritual halo, um, understand that doing so will obscure her from you as a person. So when we're projecting, there goes our humanity. So then when they struggle to have their humanity come back, or they don't even know what, what's going on, um, we're devastated. But when we have that kind of devastation, we have to say, uh, or, you know, we, we raise a child and we think they're going to be something that they, that's not within their destiny to be. Get out of Dodge. That's your projection. That they will save you or your sense of self by becoming something that you think is totally cool. It may not be their destiny. 
So naming the process helps. It's the beginning of consciousness. Why do I have such a strong feeling when uh, I look at her? Do I really see her? Do I love her or him? Or, I, or am I in love with her? Putting the bell jar of this luminosity over her, which obliviates her from my sight. We are rarely conscious of what is going on, and our gold is bouncing around everywhere. Out of control, alchemical inner gold, our most precious possession, is sputtering down the street. We barely understand how much of what we perceive in others and the outside world are actually parts of ourselves. So please observe the energy investments you make. The exchange of inner gold is occurring all the time. Try to become conscious of it. We cannot contain it in traditional ways. We need to create new languages and new ways for increasing our awareness. So when we project onto someone, how are we going to get that projection back? First, we're aware of it. It's like, whoa, that's a projection. Or, you know, usually, you know, when people fall in love, uh, that in love state lasts about six months. And then suddenly, all that, all that love, people notice it's like, wow, actually, you know, that person doesn't give back. And I've been giving and giving and giving. Well, you know, you were creating your reality and you were so intent on showing how good you are and generous you are and which is can be power it's not always well intentioned um person didn't have to do shit they just took and then then we're heartbroken you give them the best of anything and everything we don't see Sometimes we give out of, uh, out of a tremendous sense of loneliness. That's a big motivator. All right, but when we begin to understand that the gold is what we project, when we're working in an analysis, gold is always exchanged. Most people don't even realize it. So they won't say. They won't say. You know. Okay. You've got to get. You know. Got to get your gold back. What I do is. You know. I have a, a little bowl of. Uh, you know. Candies with gold paper. And I give them a gold piece of paper back, little candy, and say, "Here, take your gold. It's not mine. This belongs to you. This is your talent. This is your ability. I've got my own gold. You've got yours." So it's a very simple. And people laugh. It's, it's, it's a simple um, ritual, but a very powerful one. We don't have a right. We can hold someone's gold. We do that with children. We hold their gold, their potential. But we've got to give it back to them. Not keep it. They need it. They need to know what they've got. So when you... Th- particularly during the, the solstice, it's, it's do something that helps you get your gold back. You know, we, we can, uh, or just go over all the people in your life. You're going to be here for a while, so just chill. All the people in your life you've projected your gold onto. And it was because you couldn't deal with it. No, they should have the fame. I, I can just hang out or, or no, this. And then uh, we begin to realize that we need to create a ceremony to, to mark the returning of your gold. And that can be, yay, the 21st. So do something. Make it up yourself because whatever, you know, it's, it's what is meaningful to you. What is meaningful to your heart So, and get that gold back. They don't need it. 
if they're in the throes of someone is leaving, whether they're leaving the relationship or they're leaving the planet, make sure you get your goal back because it just makes it so difficult for them, them to depart. I had a, a beloved cat, Isis, and I had her for 19 years, but two years before she was uh, ready to leave, I was told uh, that she would be going in about two years, Spirit told me, and then I had to withdraw my projections onto her. Who knew, right? But it was true. And uh, so every day, you know, I did a little, a little ceremony, a little meditation, and just took a little piece of gold back because she didn't need it where she was going, and she was holding it for me. So that one day, she was like my treasure chest. And in that two years, so much changed inside of me and outside. You know, gifts and talents that I didn't know like making shoes suddenly appeared, uh, things I had long forgotten that I could do. I mean, I didn't know I could make shoes. I knew I could make things, uh, but that returned. So every day I took a little bit back. I mean, I wasn't killing her. I was taking out the alchemical gold, the projection of my divinity onto her so that she could be free. So when the moment came for her to leave, I was uh, blessed with uh, having her leave while I was holding her. And she left. She ascended. And the whole room turned gold. It was quite extraordinary. This is also true if you are a godparent. You're, as a godparent, it, what it originally meant was holding the child's gold. It wasn't whether you're going to take them to church or synagogue or any of that. It was being able to just say, okay, I am going to hold that. So the original meaning of the terms godfather or godmother, the person is the carrier of godlike qualities for you. And nowadays we think of a godparent as one who will take care of us you know, materialistically in case our parents are not able to see it through. But the original meaning was of someone who carries a subtle part of your life. A parent is an interior godlike way. It's a wonderful custom. Most parents are worn out just seeing their child through to physical maturity. We need someone else who isn't bothered with authority issues. Being a godparent was originally quite an arrangement for holding a child's gold. The same is true as with a mentor. Children will, will seek out mentors <coughs> to hold their gold for them, to hold their potential. In a sense, I guess, when we graduate and we get diplomas, and you know, that's, that, that's our gold coming back. So this is a time to sort your projections, to see where you've left them hanging, your gold hanging all over the place, and go get it back. Because in taking it back, and there are some people who will fight with you, okay? So you can do this all in the invisible. You can do this all through meditation. And, you know, because some people, it's like, no, they get used to your gold. They actually think your talent is their talent. So you are going to gather your gold, and uh, then we're going to the ball. And we're going to use that magic twig, that hazel twig, to, uh, to manifest some fabulous outfits. So till we meet again, uh, go on the website or Facebook, LorraineNightheart.com, or Venus Unplugged, or call for an appointment, 212-757-8914, and go get your gold. So it will be marvelous. Bye. Progressive brings you Flowetry with Flow. When Flow flows, she flows in the know. Mind ruminates the rape. Shown them all, I heed the call. Seeing the rest, I choose the best. Sometimes it's ours, sometimes it's not. When the fox walks, is it called a fox trot? That's a real question. Compare progressive direct rates with competitors' rates. 
Visit Progressive.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Comparison rates not available in all states or situations. Prices vary based on how you buy.